This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Jack Threads. As you guys know, we are fans of your feedback, so please keep sending those in to feedback at hack5.org if you have questions about segments that we've done here on the show, if there's a segment you'd like us to see doing here on the show, words with Shannon. Brandon writes, stuff. the open source screen recorder you couldn't think of for Windows is probably Cam Studio Open Source. It is one of the most popular and free recording softwares out there. Otherwise, you have to pay like $300 for TechSmith's Camtasia Studio. You can find Cam Studio over at camstudio.org. We actually used Cam Studio, the open source version, like in the first and second season of mm -hmm. Hack 5. Uh, mm -hmm. And back then, in like 05 and 06, kind of it was like the only open source thing around and uh, we're the only free thing really feasibly for Windows. Not a huge fan of it. Maybe it's been updated since. I see there's a 2.0 release now, a 2.6 beta. Uh, not really seeing dates on here, but <laughs> it would be, I don't know, I, I could try it again. I'm in Linux now though, so I just use FFmpeg. Um, but, uh, but yeah, thank you. That's the open source alternative if you don't want to go with the free proprietary stuff, which is that Blueberry software mm -hmm. we recommended last week. Thanks yeah, for sending like that Blueberry. in. Thank you. John writes, hey, I'm a longtime fan of the show, and on episode 1003, Darren ran the motherboard off of a non-standard connector. Was it put together by Darren, or is there somewhere that I can get one, as I really need this for a mobile game server I'm working on? Was, were there any drawbacks to using the battery instead of a standard PSU? So it's really just a uh, DC power supply for a computer, and this is what it ends up looking like. Let me just pull this guy off the motherboard, and this is just your standard ATX connector here. Hang on. Come here. You can get it. It does want to come out now. Did you pull on his little lever? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Come on. That's how you know that it was made properly. There we go. And it doesn't want to come out. So this right here is just a DC to DC power supply. And what that's going to allow you to do is with either a big power brick like you would have on the back of a laptop cord, um, or in our case, a battery, allow you to power a computer off of 12 volts. So if we were to, say, plug it into our, our car, we'd be able to do the same thing. The limitations that you're going to run into with these guys, and you can pretty much pick them up at whatever you know, computer shop you fancy, uh, is that I think this one was 160 watt. Yeah. I haven't seen really big ones. If you're putting together, that's why one of the reasons this is not a gaming rig in any sense of the imagination. Pop a big honking video card in here and this thing's not going to boot. It's just not <laughs> enough juice. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much all you have to do is go and grab one of these guys and, uh, and you're all set. Cool. Next up is SWE Hunter 2000 on YouTube. He said, hey, I need to run a PC from a 12 volt battery just like you did. Can you please make a more in-depth tutorial about how you did that? All right, kind of goes along with what you were just talking about. All you yeah, need to do is grab one of those and then one of these. This is a uh, 12 volt battery and this is the, actually the other side of the connector that you would have uh, found on uh, the back of this guy. So what we've done here actually is the uh, negative and the positive, you can tell because they are both red. No, I'm joking. Um, this one's got a loop. But uh, all we have to do is we tapped into here. It's kind of electric taped up. It's not the most beautiful job. This is what the connector typically looks like. like. Um, these little DC to DC power supplies actually end up coming with um, kind of like a, a mini PC, or I'm sorry, a PCI backplane that would uh, allow you to plug the little DC, you know, bullet kind of connector into the back of that. And then when these two guys meet, the computer comes on. Uh, this 12 volt battery is a 7.2 amp hour battery. If you were drawing 14 amps, it would only last for a half hour. So, you know, you just got to do the math. You can, this is typically used in like security, um, what are they, uh, like, like video security stuff, like garage doors use these. You can pick up these kind of batteries at, you know, a, uh, any, any electronics store, really. Uh, you could use a big honking car battery with like, you know, 
20 amps and 20 amp hours and all that fun stuff or 200 awesome. get some ridiculously big ones. I mean, imagine a Wi-Fi pineapple lasting for 16 days on a single charge. What? Ooh. But, uh, you know, it, you really just have to do the math. This guy, I'll be honest, does not power this machine for a whole long time. Mm. Not really. All right. Next up is Mike. He writes, I came across this service on my travels outside the UK for access to iPlayer. It's called FreeUKVPN.com. It's great, great for two megabits per second bandwidth, which is just enough for streaming, but they don't change, but they change the password every 12 hours, which is a minor inconvenience for such a great service. Mm -hmm. I am still using uh, Weetopia, and you know, there's nothing wrong with those free services when it just comes to, oh, I want a VPN to the UK so I can use the BBC iPlayer or whatever it may be that you're attempting to do. Just keep in mind, and this is really one of these points where everybody's like, oh, secure yourself on a public Wi-Fi by just using a VPN. And really all you're doing is, I mean, eventually that connection is going to be unencrypted at some point in time when it hits the web server, unless it's like SSL end to end. Um, and all you're doing when you say at like a public Wi-Fi, you're on an unencrypted wireless yeah. network and then you VPN to London, and then from London it comes out unencrypted and it's like now you've just moved where that endpoint is where it's unencrypted. So that's great that there are services out there like that where you can you know, use to stream the BBCI player. I'm just gonna say, I don't know who those people are. Not like I you know, really know we, the Weetopia guys either. You just kind of have to you know, ask yourself how much do you trust that, uh, that source for your tunnel? And I'm, I don't know if I'd be logging into my Gmail or anything like that yeah. while using that tunnel, so. Okay. That's why I like to set up my own VPN servers on my own, like mm -hmm. virtual private servers and, you know, dedicated and stuff like that. Run it at home. Next up was Jack Clark 1981 on YouTube. He says, does anyone know of a good alternative to V Downloader in Ubuntu? Yeah, actually, uh, Paul recommends the, what is it, the easy YouTube downloader extension oh, for yeah. Firefox, which is cross-platform, so Windows, yeah. Mac, Linux, whatever you want to do there. Um, and that's just a great tool for downloading YouTube videos. We do it here on Hack5 sometimes. We're like, yep. you know, there's an asset that we need to bring into Premiere. And it's great because, Paul, does it transcode? Um, yeah, I think it bounces off a server or something like that. It's kind of one of those deals. Okay, so you can get either, like, the FLV straight from YouTube or, like, yeah, you know, you some, something, an MP4, an MP4 file. Nice. There you go. Sweet. I hope that helps you out. I hope that you guys could help us out. You can help us out for free, easily. All you have to do is subscribe. Head over to hack5.org slash subscribe. Find all the ways that you can get your technolist delivered to you weekly. It just shows up. Mmm, delicious. Yes. Stay tuned because we'll be right back with this week's technolist photo and the trivia after a quick See, break. See, here I am trying to end the show like right now. Yeah, I was like, what the if you love alternative apparel brands like Kid Robot, Hurley, and Stussy, but you hate wasting cash, get this. You could score these premium brands at up to 80% off every day at Jack Threads, the invite-only shopping club for guys. They're serving up street, skate, and surfwear brands at brain-melting prices. Best of all, Hack 5's hooking you up. That's right, skip the wait list and join free at jackthreads.com slash H-A-K-5 to start saving instantly without having to leave the house. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5. But before we get going, you guys know that we have the Technolist Photo of the Week. We've got some trivia. Uh, yes, yes, we do. <clears throat> We've got animal before sounds. Before I start crying. The bloopers. <laughs> okay. The Technolist Photo of the Week comes from Dave, who says, After you did Hack Across America, I was inspired to get a motorcycle. Nice. And I got... I'm 18 now. I got my first learner legal permit, the UK 125cc Yamaha YBR, two weeks ago. And of course, it's black and has the Hack5 sticker on the side. Nice. If you guys got pictures, make sure you send them over to feedback at hack5.org. And now, it's time for trivia. Ba -ba -dum. Last week's trivia question was, who were the first three developers of the Metasploit project? Ooh, ooh. What's the answer? HD Moore? Yes. An ASCII cow? No, it's uh, it's uh, Spoon M and yes. uh, and Scape. Yes, correct. And this week's question is: What fictional military supercomputer responds to the name Joshua? And you will totally lose points if you don't get that one. Yeah, you're, you're like yeah, you're amazing. losing geek points as you sit there watching Hack Five if you don't <laughs> know this right now. 
Sorry, Dave. Some easy ones this week. Okay. Just Google it. <laughs> anyway, before we wrap up, I want to ask you, like, oh, you've had... Oh, slash trivia. Yes. That's where you there can you answer. Go. Um, before we get going and stuff, like, I got to ask you, for, from your first impressions having all of five minutes with, uh, with all Natty, five minutes. how are you feeling? Um, nice, nice layout. I, I know where all the menus are and all that jazz, but what the F was up with the wireless? You had a Broadcom and an Acer, and you had your first taste of what Linux. What crap is that? Is, it's, Linux is going to, it's going to, like, and blacklist next year. Crap. Next year is the, is the year for Linux on the desktop. I've been saying what that for a while. Fuck? Next year is going to be it. But um, it turns out if you adjust your modprobe.d slash blacklist.com and add Acer TAC WMI to the blacklist, you should be all set. Yeah, you're, you're apparently. On, you're on the Wi-Fi now, right? Yes, now I am on the Wi-Fi. So do it's you see actually now working. why I swear by a Thea Theros chipset? I do. I, you know, I didn't know it made a difference yeah. until I started actually messing with it in different like Linux distros, and now I'm like, oh, you have to go through all that stuff. Yeah. To make it actually work. I had that kind of a headache with oh, what was it? Was it the was it the booklet 3G the Nokia thing? Or, I forget what it was, but. But thank, yes. thanks, Kami, for all the good people on the internets because when you Google it. You find the answer. Yes, and props to Oliver uh, ninety thousand one at ubuntuforms.org for hooking us up with that. Yes, thank you for the answer. Yeah, see, I, I mean, it's not that hard though, right? You just you just Google yeah. your chipset and the problem. You just had yeah. to know firsthand what prior to it that what LSPCI was and all. Anyway, you're right. getting there. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> all right. Speaking of getting there, we are getting out of here. It's lunchtime, and I'm trying to end the show blocks ago. <laughs> yeah, so. so you know where to subscribe, iTunes and YouTube, of course. And remember, you can always get all of your favorite Hack5 goodies over at hackshop.com. We got a lot of new stuff in the store right now. You're going to love the new stuff that we're bringing in, too, because we just got a Ooh. laser thingy. It'll be in the office soon. A laser thingy. A laser thingy. thingy. We'll, sh we'll, we'll talk about that later. Anyway. All right. Um, we also, got jackets, Wi-Fi adapters. Be sure to tune keys. in to Hack Tips every Friday. Get your tips on with Darren and Shannon. That'd be myself and her. And then follow us on Twitter, Google+, and all the other fun places where you can find Hack 5 happenings. Until then, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your technolust. Dun, 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 dun. I'm an angry penguin. I thought we were done with the show. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> I really thought we were done. I'm like, <laughs> like, come on, man. I want to get to lunch. Unicorn of the sea. Ba -ba -da -da. Unicorn. <laughs> Barking now? <laughs> totally did. What sound does a cat make? Meow. What sound does a dog make? <laughs> what sound does a cow make? Moo. What sound does a hedgehog make? What sound does a charging penguin make? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you ever look into the light and it makes you sneeze? You know, Scam School does the same thing. It really does. I know. It's kind of great. I was sitting there next to Brian and he goes, okay, and we're ready, and okay, there, there we go. All right, we're ready. I was like, all right. <laughs> What? It's taking too long. Da 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 da. I'm an angry penguin.